Okay, coming to us from an undisclosed location aboard their Class B motorhome, here we have uh, Joe and Kate Russo. We're the Russos. Hello. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. How are you doing? Oh, it's great to finally have you here on the podcast and on the on the channel. And uh, first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit, uh, a little bit about yourselves and how you got started? Uh, what what compelled you to 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 do this lifestyle, this version of the American dream. So we're Joe and Kate Russo. We've been full-timing since September, 2015. Mm -hmm. And we decided to do it because our, you know, our corporate jobs, this life we had just wasn't for us and we needed something different. So we initially decided to buy a RV, get on the road for a year. And then we thought, you know, Hey, after the year, you know, we'll go and get back to work and do something like that. And a month in, we decided we had to figure out a way to make this a full-time living mm -hmm. and keep going on the road. And that's why we ended up starting our website, we're the Russos .com, uh, and our YouTube channel. And now, you know, we have a book out. So we're really trying to make a go of it and enjoy this life for as long as we can. Yeah, I would say the freedom that we felt in that first month of hitting the road was so addicting. Uh, we didn't want to give it up and we couldn't imagine going back to the life before. So no. it was all in and we wanted to make this work. Yeah. And I have to say, Robert, you were actually, I think one of the, one of our first subscribers back yeah. in the beginning, I remember you commenting mm -hmm. and uh, you being on there. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I, I, I think it was your videos about the Tampa RV show from like yeah. two years ago. I think that those were some of the, and that's the first time you saw the, the RV where you are yes. right now. But tell us a little more about your book. Uh, what is it about? And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, tell us a little about it. Sure. So the book is called Take Risks, One Couple's Journey to Quit Their Jobs and Hit the Open Road. Um, I wrote it because a lot of people have asked us when we tell them we're full timers, they always want to know our story. So this was a way to tell that story, but also be an inspiration to others. The book takes place when Kate actually came up with the crazy idea to hit the road and go full time all the way through everything we had to do to uh, sell the house, find a motor home, quit our jobs, downsize from a 13 or 1200 square foot house down to a motor home and, you know, all of the ups and downs. So we really had some challenges that we went through and we wanted to talk about those. So that people also who also go through the experience know that, you know, there's a lot to look forward to, but there's a lot you're going to have to deal with in the mm -hmm. process. And the book ends with our first day on the road. Uh, and it's actually the first book in a series. So we are going to continue that book with our first year on the road and talking about all the trials and tribulations we went through with that. Yeah. There's quite a few. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, I think that first book is very important for, for prospective RVers because it is really, uh, uh, you explain really well the whole process about downsizing and, and finding the right RV for you. Uh, which is, uh, is is also a challenge and getting, yeah. and getting a good deal and you know all, all that and, and I, I like the way you did in the book that you make it kind of like a like a story like a conversation it's, it's not as straight up like how to this this and that yeah I you know I wanted to make it fun I wanted people to be able to read it and relate to us throughout mm -hmm. the story and you know I thought about doing a how-to book my my drawback with that though was it's a how-to, it would be a how-to from our perspective. Mm -hmm. And everyone has something else that they're looking for. So I wanted to write it in a perspective of what we went through and maybe some general ideas of things to look out for and to be aware of, but it's really a personal journey. And I think this was more of a, you know, an inspiration for people to, if you're living a life that isn't for you and you want to make a change, here's how we did it. And you can look at our experiences and learn from that and then take your own journey. Yeah, I wish I had had your book for, for the first time I bought my my oh. my trailer. Uh, anyways, now let, let's jump ahead because you're going to do the part two about your first year on the road. But now you have done some major downsizing in yes. your RVing. And I'm, I'm assuming that's going to be probably part three. But can you can you can you give us your your perspective on how you moved from a, was it a, a 30 foot uh, class A motorhome? to, to uh, class B, basically, and a, and a small class B at that, if you will. 
Absolutely. Sure. So the funny thing is, you know, when we were going through our RV shopping journey, before we hit the road, we actually looked at Class Bs. And Briefly. And we both, both mm-hmm. said to each other, there's no way yeah. we can live it. No. Yeah. At no the way. beginning, I was the same way. I'm like, no way. I, yeah. <laughs> And then, as you mentioned, you know, when we were at the Tampa show two years ago, that's when we first saw the Heimer. And mm-hmm. at, back then it was called the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. We looked through that and we thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Very sleek European design. Um, very nice. And then I would say shortly after that, we started to realize that the 29-foot motorhome we had um, had all this extra space and storage. And there was you know, the back bedroom that we never use except to sleep. And we realized, boy, maybe we can go smaller and, you know, get into so many more places. And the flexibility and accessibility of a Class B motorhome really appealed to me. Um, And I knew I could downsize most of my stuff. (laughs) Joe had a hard time. (laughs) Um, It's usually the other way around. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> but for me, like, you know, I had all these shoes and I, yeah, I love yeah. shoes and bags for some reason. I guess I used that, to. I yeah. used to. Yeah. Um, but getting rid of that stuff, all of my tools, I had to really downsize there. And just a lot of stuff that you realize I have it, I'm not using it. Um, so what do I need to keep in case there's an emergency or I have to have a tool or something like that? So we've downsized quite a bit. And like Kate said, it was much more difficult for me to do. Yeah. She w- she's been on board from the beginning. Yeah. Right. Um, it took me a lot longer to get there. Yeah. Right. And I was actually pretty scared when we, when we made the decision to get a class B and we were in the process of selling our class A, I was really scared and nervous that we would get into the class B and I would just hate it. Yeah. But it's it's worked out really well for us. It has. I'm glad. And every transition we've made, we've just gone full in. Um, you know, there's always the option to rent a Class A motorhome mm-hmm. for a weekend or rent mm-hmm. a Class B for a weekend. We said none of that. We're just going to yeah. go forward full steam ahead. Yeah. Our, our first night ever in an RV was when we brought our 30-foot Newmar home and we spent the night in it. That yeah. That was our first time ever spending the night in an RV. Oh, wow. So you went all in. Oh, <laughs> yeah, in. oh that's great. And, and you find the class B now to be adequate for, for your, for your lifestyle. Yeah. I, I would definitely say it's not for everyone. No. Um, yeah. There is, there is a lot of transition you have to do. Mm-hmm. If you have a partner and you know, there's two people in here, you really have to learn how to get around mm-hmm. and we call it the van shuffle. <laughs> yeah. So we'll literally say to one another, okay, it's time to shuffle because I might be in the kitchen making coffee and Kate needs to get to the like bedroom area or into the bathroom. So I have to move out and then she can move in. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's little things like that. And it's also getting used to bumping your head on things all the time. Yeah. And then your body eventually learns. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like everything in life. Eventually, I, I suppose you get used to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. 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 The same thing. But I will say the first few months of transitioning to full time van life was pretty stressful um, Mm -hmm. for us. And I think it was very good that we have a solid relationship Mm -hmm. Um, because, as Joe mentioned, it's not for everyone. If you're going to be traveling with a partner in a class B, you have to have good communication skills to make it work. Yeah. And I would say our, our YouTube subscribers actually had made comments that we looked more stressed. And at first we were kind of dismissive of those, but then we started looking more internally and realized that there were things that were stressing us out about living in this small space together. And it took a lot of communication between the two of us to really nail down um, how we were going to live in this space together, how we were going to work together and really adapt to it. And now that we have, we've been in here eight months now and I love this so much more than a big motorhome. We would never go back. No. I, I couldn't do it. Well, that, that, that's the thing. The, the, the good thing about the Class B, and that's what sold me on Class B, is that you can park virtually anywhere. Yes. And that's, that's I think that's the deal, change, the, the, you know, the, the deal changer in, the, in, in this uh, 
Uh, you know, I, I saw, I, I was in, in Mount Dora, I remember vividly, and I saw a, a, a Winnebago Travaro, which is slightly bigger than yours, or about the same size, and I saw about it, the same. I saw it in a regular parking spot, in a really tight parking lot, and I'm like, yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love the fact that we can, we can go pretty much anywhere, mm -hmm. and we've been in some national parks and other places mm -hmm. where it's just absolutely beautiful. We drive our home to that spot and then we can work there from the day yeah. and have some of the most amazing views and the most amazing offices that you can imagine. Yeah. And the other thing too, that, you know, I didn't think about when we transitioned, not just being able to park in a standard spot, but being able to book a tent site as opposed to an RV site mm -hmm. because we fit. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's opened up a lot of great campgrounds in the national park. We were able to camp at Yosemite national mm -hmm. park for multiple nights because we're in a small camper van. Whereas if we had the class A, there's no way we could have done that. No, yeah. no way. And, and you have the solar panels and you have good batteries. So you can boondock for, for several days, probably with no problem. Oh yeah. No, but, we can go almost indefinitely depending on, you know, what the sun is like and our electric usage. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of uh, um, Class B uh, um, RVers don't use the bathroom. Do you use your bathroom at all, or is it, uh, or is it like everybody else, pretty much storage at this point? No. So we use our bathroom. Um, I've showered in there once, and mm -hmm. it's fine for rinsing off and taking a quick shower. But we have a gym membership where we go, and we're mm -hmm. at Planet Fitness, so we can go nice. pretty much anywhere in the country, get a shower, get a nice workout in. Um, but what we found is we use our bathroom for number one, uh, we have a cassette toilet. Mm -hmm. So the cassette toilet makes it extremely easy to empty that. And then for everything else we go and we find a bathroom somewhere, right. um, which at first was really stressful for me because that is a total life change where, you know, yeah. now in the morning you have your cup of coffee and you have to go <laughs> find a bathroom somewhere. And I was always thinking about that in the back of my head, but once you get used to it and you kind of it becomes part of your daily routine. Mm -hmm. um, you don't think about it anymore. Yeah, I guess you have and to change your habits at some point because yeah, I'm exactly. the same way. If I don't have that, I, I, that uh, black, uh, I have a black water tank, of course. Mm -hmm. It's like, it would, be, would be stressful for me. So Yeah, I will say though, the cassette toilet has changed our lives. Mm -hmm. And I say that because with the black tank, you always have to also be in the back of your head, where am I going to dump? Yeah. How long do I have and where am I going to dump once it's full? Mm -hmm. And we go a lot of places where there aren't dump stations. And with the cassette toilet, we can dump that anywhere. Yeah, it's uh, we're at, yeah, we're at a campground. We can dump it right down the, you know, the hole. You have to watch your aim a little bit. Mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> I, mean, I have to watch. Yeah, my she aim. does all the dumping. Oh, uh, you can do it in, you know, porta potties, uh, public restrooms at parks and all sorts of different places. And it doesn't make a mess. It doesn't really smell. It's yeah, great. It's easy. And I think we've talked about this, you know, if we move into another motor home or RV of any kind, we want to keep a cassette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No yeah. more black. Tank no no yes. more black tank for you. <laughs> uh, composting toilet next. <laughs> no, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Next. I mean, maybe you never know. Okay. Going to well, a more pleasant. I'm toilet. sorry. We did try a composting toilet that we discussed extensively in the book. Yes, <laughs> I, it, I, I, it, I, <laughs> yeah, I think I saw that chapter. I saw the picture of you with a, it was like a red box. Was it uh -huh. a toilet? <laughs> yeah, my, my homemade composting toilet. If <laughs> that, you want a good laugh, read that chapter. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, going to a more pleasant subject, if you will. Uh, uh, your next book is going to be about your first uh, year RVing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't exactly. have to be in that first year, but in all your RVing, what has been like your favorite place in the United States that, that you would say, a place that you would, would go back? I would say um, before we made it up to Oregon, our answer was always Flagstaff. We oh, really? absolutely love Flagstaff, Sedona, that area around there. But now that we've been through Oregon, I would say Oregon has to be overall one of our favorite states. Um, I think Arizona is up there as well. Uh, but Oregon was just beautiful. Going up and down the coast on the 101, lots mm -hmm. of places to boondock, uh, great people, great beer, great coffee. Hey. Uh, what about you? Florida is definitely on the list for me in oh, addition because yeah. we yeah. did winter for a while in Florida that mm -hmm. first year. And what, what part of Florida? Oh. The entire state. The yeah. entire state. Yeah. We love it all. We really like Gainesville. 
Um, that was a fun little college mm-hmm. town. We like Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we'd love to go back and explore more of it. There's a lot to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Miami reminded us more of Los Angeles where we started. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, that was a bit too much for us. But when we, you know, went a few miles over to Fort Lauderdale, we're like, ah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is I know exactly what you mean <laughs> because yeah. I live here all the time. And, and whenever I have to return, it's like that, that stretch of I-95 just approaching in Miami. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. I will say the drivers in Miami really oh scared my God. me. <laughs> they, they do not respect RVs. No, no, no. Although let me tell you, Atlanta is almost as bad. Yes, I, I, I was just recently in Atlanta. I don't know. In LA, it's a lot of traffic, but I think every, everybody pretty much knows how to drive. So it's, it's. <laughs> I would it's, say, yeah, Los Angeles people who like myself. I grew up in Los Angeles, and you learn to deal with the traffic and how to get in and out. Um, but when we've been other places and traffic is more of a, a new thing to the people mm-hmm. there, um, it's very difficult for all the cars going back and forth and cutting people off yeah. and everything and. <laughs> You know, I think in at least in Los Angeles, people have learned to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Although it's not something you want to deal with, that's why we got out of there. Yeah, yeah. I think the problem with Los Angeles is is the long distances that it takes. You know, hours. Oh, you know, yes. to, to get from one place to the other. I've been there a couple of times, and although okay, uh, now a place in uh, and I'm gonna put you on the spot. A place in the United States that didn't live up to the hype that everybody said, "Oh, you must go here. They have the best coffee or oh. the best beer or the best view," and you're like. Hmm. I, I know one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start it. Okay. Um, and I, I apologize to anyone who loves this place in advance. Uh, the Dells in Wisconsin. Oh, the Wisconsin, oh, Dells. Yeah, Wisconsin Dells. They, everyone, when we were in Wisconsin, everyone told us we had to go there. It's beautiful and everything else. And it is gorgeous. However, the big strip and everything else, it was just so, to me, just so over commercialized. Mm-hmm. And it was more like going, trying to go to a theme park rather than a beautiful place to visit. Yeah. And I really liked it was the Dells themselves were actually were gorgeous. Um, I wish when we were there, we had done some uh, kayaking or something down the river. But yeah, that main strip of town was just too much. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would have been my answer, too. Yeah. Yeah. But everywhere else has been really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we try to focus on is. You know, go off the beaten path a little bit, avoid the major cities um, and sort of find the cute little quaint towns yeah, and really yeah. get to know those. Is this something that you guys plan to do indefinitely? Like, uh, or do you have a, a point in life where you're going to say, hmm, maybe we'll settle back down into a house or a, or a homestead <laughs> or whatever? Right now, we want to keep going for as long as we can. We love it so much. Uh, we check in with each other all the time. You know, are you still having fun? Is this fulfilling? Mm-hmm. And the answer is still yes. So we'll keep going until that answer is no. Yeah. And we've talked about going to Europe. And we would love, we don't know if we would do it uh, long term, but uh, we would love to take a motor or, you know, van or get a van over there, over in Europe and travel around. The only, um, you know, difficulty there is within the European Union, you're only allowed to stay there for three months total. And then you have to be out for three months and then you can come back in. Right. So we would, you know, we would try to plan it around staying in the EU for three months, maybe going down to Morocco, going over into more, some of the Eastern Bloc countries mm-hmm. or in the UK um, and see how that works. Or we may just try to do it for three months yeah, and see how it works out. Yeah, we I- definitely want international yes I, and you've you've already downsized and you're already used to the cassette toilet so you're gonna feel right at home <laughs> in, oh exactly <laughs> in europe so that's that's great uh, that, that's a that's a, a future plan for for us as well are you gonna are you planning on buying something used over there or, or renting well renting will be probably too expensive right yeah we're not sure yet we're still looking at our options and what's out there um you know we may try to find something here that works for us because Shipping, um, from what we've seen, is about fifteen hundred to two thousand mm-hmm. each way. Yeah, you can. Ship um, it, yeah, yeah. So if you're going to be there long enough, that's actually for a lot of people, it's less expensive to ship a car or a van over there than it is to rent for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. Which to me, it's crazy, but yeah, you can do it. Yeah, what's his um, uh, name? Kamskonk, I think, is his name. He's uh, he's uh, he he usually contributes with uh, Heimer, I think, and he. he was he Heimer or Road Trek? And he, he shipped his Road Trek. 
uh, to Europe. Interesting. And, yeah, yeah, we don't we haven't heard of that, but we'll look yeah. into it. Yeah, he has a he has a road trek uh, Mercedes. And um, any 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 challenges, unexpected challenges you found on the road in this life, like something like totally out of, out of left field that you didn't expect. Hmm. hmm. Um. I I definitely. I mean, I think this would be if you think about it, and you're a logical person, this would be something you should expect. But I never did, which is, um, I got really lonely, and really? you know, we have each other, obviously, but. I was used to a very uh, social life where, you know, you're at work and you have your, you know, your friends and coworkers and people you meet with all the time. Uh, you might go out for happy hours. You have friends you can call up and do things with all the time. And I think for me, the challenge first getting on the road was I left all that behind and now it's just Kate 24 <laughs> hours a day. Um, so she's great company, but sometimes I need more. Uh, and I remember saying to her sometimes like, Hey, can we just go out to a restaurant or go grab a beer somewhere? Because I wanted to feel that interaction with other people. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think we both found difficult was getting into a new town and not knowing anything. So, you know, when you're home, you have like your favorite Chinese restaurant, um, you know, the grocery store you always go to and you have things you're familiar with. When you go to a new city, you're not familiar with anything. Um, so that was difficult, but I will say it's been really fun going new places and finding new things. Like I will say, I never expected to have one of the best sandwiches of my life at Publix. Oh, really? <laughs> and yeah, we love, we, you know, Publix, their fried chicken, the mojo pork and their sandwiches. Awesome. Oh yeah. Their fried chicken. <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah. Uh, any any advice any advice you would like to give uh, just to wrap it up uh, uh, prospective RVers who are like on the fence uh, about embracing the lifestyle? What do you think? I would say you know just you have to really follow your passion, follow your gut, and go for it. Uh, you know, like Joe's book's title, "Take Risks." It's really about getting out of. You know, if you're a little uncomfortable, it might be a good thing to you know, get out of that comfort zone and try something different, try something new. And we certainly did it. And I never looked back. And when people ask if we have any regrets, we both say we regret not doing it sooner. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I would also say that um, for people that are looking at RVs, I've, I've seen salespeople try to convince others that, you know, buy your last RV first. I would say, you're never going to be in just one RV. You're going to buy one. You're going to realize that there are different things you like or ways you travel. So you're going to want to downsize or upsize or get something different. So find something that works for you now, but be prepared to be looking for something else down the road. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Where can people find you once again uh, online? Uh, they can find us on our website, where the Russos.com. We have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash where the Russos. We're also on all social media at Were the Russos. And finally, the book, it's uh, Take Risks by Joe Russo. So check that you can find that on Amazon in digital print format and pretty much anywhere else you can buy a book online. Well, it's been great uh, chatting with you guys finally in person. I, I, I've I been know. following you for, for two or three years, of course. And um, uh, ho hopefully we'll get to, to meet on the road. Uh, one of these yeah, days. that would be fantastic. Be great. Maybe yeah. in Arizona. Maybe so. in Arizona. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do a, a joint video together. All right. I like it. All right. Thank you so much for being in the podcast and in the video. Thank, Thank you so much you for having us. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, and make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word, and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.